So this brings us to a very interesting topic and it is interesting in the sense that you'll be able to connect the physics of this topic with the real world much easily. Let's start with a simple example where you have a tennis ball with which you're quite familiar. So if I were to ask you what is the center of mass of this ball, it would be very easy for you to tell and you'll quickly point out that it resides over here. And you're able to tell that easily because this ball is a symmetric object, it's, it's a sphere, and you can intuitively tell that the center of this mass of the ball would reside inside right in the center and if you were to throw this ball up in the air let's say we were to give it a trajectory like this you would also be able to predict what path it'll take it'll probably take a path like this which would not be very surprising for you but you might want to take a note over here that the center of the mass of this ball that you've pointed out earlier would tend to take a parabolic path the way it is shown in this diagram. But what if I were to give you an object which was not uniform, which is not symmetrical? So let's say if I were to give you a bat like this, it would be difficult to predict the center of mass of this bat, but you would have an intuitive sense that the center of mass of this bat would lie a little more towards the heavier side of the bat that is over here rather than right in the center. And if this bat were to be thrown in the air, if it were to be projected like a projectile, path it would take would look something like this and probably you can imagine it but let me put it over here so what you'll observe is that every part of the bat moves in a different path and as such the bat cannot be represented as a particle instead it is a system of particles kind of following their own path what you would notice is that there's one point that is the center of mass that does move in a parabolic path and the other particles tend to move around it so that's the beauty of center of mass or the study of center of mass. So let's go ahead and see what would happen if you have a system of masses rather than a single mass. Let us say the system of masses was at a distance of x1 and x2 from the origin. And let's say this is your origin. Now, how would you find the center of mass of the system? So you have mass m1 over here and m2 over here. So intuitively, once again, you would know that the center of mass would be a little more towards m2 because it looks bigger than m1 and let's assume the density of both the masses is the same so you would say that the center of mass would tilt more towards m2 but how would you exactly find that so the formula we use in physics is x center of mass is equal to the product m1 x1 plus m2 x2 divided by the sum of the mass m1 plus m2 so if you calculate this if you have the values of x1 m1 m2 and x2 you'll get the coordinate on x-axis where the center of mass would fall now let us say you added another mass over here mass m3 and let us say that it is at a distance x3 from the origin and now you have to find the center of mass of system of three masses so what you'll do is you will go ahead and add the product of m3 and x3 in the numerator and also add mass m3 in the denominator so you can extend this logic to n number of masses so let's say instead of three masses you had n number of masses the formula you would get is that x coordinates of center of mass of n number of particles would equal to sigma of m i x i divided by the sum of all the masses and let's keep it as m so m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4 right up to mn would be taken as m and here i would change from mass 1 to mass n so this is often written as 1 upon m we take m out and we take a sigma i changing from mass 1 to i equal to mass n and we take summation of product of mass and the distance from the origin so let's go ahead and find what is the center of mass of three masses if they are given in this formation and it is also given that the value of this mass is two kilograms this one is three kilograms and this one is four kilograms what's also given in the problem is that 
this distance is 1.5 meters, this distance is 4 meters, and this height is 3 meters. So to find the center of mass of such a system, what we do is, first off, put this in a coordinate system. And we'll make the coordinate system in such a way that one of the masses falls on the origin. And you'll get to see as we solve the problem why it makes sense to put one of the masses at the origin. So let's put the coordinate system over here. So this becomes the origin. And given the distances, now we know that this can be marked as 4 meters. And we've also been given the problem that this is 1.5 meters. And this, of course, is at the origin. And we can also say that the y-axis of this mass would be 3 meters. This information is given in the problem, as I mentioned earlier. Now, to find the center of mass of this system, we will first find the x-axis of the center of the mass, and then we'll find the y-axis of the center of mass. So, once again, you would know that the center of mass would probably fall somewhere more to this side, because the heavier masses, 4 kilogram and 3 kilogram, are a little more to the right. So the center of mass should also fall somewhere over here. So we have to find the x and y coordinates of this center of mass. So to find the x coordinates, we'll use this equation. And x center of mass for this system can then be written as m1, x1. And let's say this is m1. So m1 is 2 into x1, you can see is 0 because it's at the origin, plus m2 is 3 kilogram, and it's 4 meters away from the origin, and that's x coordinates. And m3 is 4 kilograms, and it is at a distance of 1.5 meters on the x-axis from the origin. And we'll divide this by the sum of the masses, which is 9 kilograms. And what, you, what you'll find is, if you calculate for this, the value comes to about 2 meters. So this kind of fixes the x-axis of the center of mass. Now to find the y-axis of the center of mass, we'll just use the same equation, but we will use all the y-coordinate values. So what you have is, instead of x, you have y-c-o-m, or y-value of center of mass, which would be nothing but m1 y1 plus m2 y2 plus m3 y3 divided by m. And if we substitute the respective values, what we get is y center of mass would equal to m1 here is 2 kg. And you can see it's again at the origin. So y value, y coordinate would be 0 plus m2 is 3 kgs. You multiply it with the y value. Again, it's on the x-axis. So the y value is 0 and m3 is 4 kg, and its y value you can see is 3 meters. And if you divide it by 9 once again, what you get is 1.33 meters. So we have effectively found the x and y coordinates of the center of mass, which is nothing but 2 meters, and 1.33 meters. So let's go ahead and plot this over here. So you have 2 meters somewhere over here, and you have 1.33 meters probably somewhere over here. So your center of mass is somewhere over here, which you had kind of intuitively guessed earlier that it will be a little to the right, more towards 4 and 3 kilograms. So let's say if, if these three masses were in a three-dimensional space instead of a two-dimensional space, the simple formula would be that you first find the x-coordinates, then the y-coordinates, and then the z-coordinates. So the simple equations you'll use is x center of mass would equal 1 upon m sigma i changing to first mass to i changing to nth mass, m i x i, and then you'll find the center of mass for the y coordinates, which will be nothing but 1 upon m as i changes from first mass to i changing to nth mass, and m i into y i instead of x i. And likewise, you'll have z center of mass would equal 1 upon m 
as i changes from the first mass to i changing to nth mass and mi into zi.